In a family business, smooth transition from one generation to the next is one of the most important part for a business to grow and flourish. Precisely this is what we plan to discuss in our next session. We are fortunate that on day one we had Mr. Shashiruya, the chairman of SR Group, amongst us and who gave his own perspective how he grew the SR Group. And today we have Prashant Ruya of the same family who is going to join us. Prashant is the promoter director and group chief executive officer of the SR Group. He has been involved in the group's operations and management since 1985. He is a member of uh, SR's uh, strategy think tank and actively involved in the group's growth and diversification globally. May I invite uh, Prashant to come and take a seat. We are fortunate to have uh, Shivna Chokral who will be moderating the session. So now please come in. Good morning everyone. Thank you uh, for coming in for this session. I will quickly introduce myself. My name is Shivnath and I work with the SR group as well. But to look back into my past two months ago, I have been with METV for 14 years. So one reason why I am doing this is because I have done this before and nothing to do with SR on that one. But thank you all for joining us. Um, we'll kick it off. The topic here, Prashant, is family business in transition. Uh, one quick point I was making to him that somebody who's been in the business since 1985, so he's hardly the second generation because he's done 80s, 90s and now the 2000s. So we're hardly the second generation. You are the generation which has done the business. We are a 40 year old company. Uh, but just to kick it off, uh, Prashant, uh, when you talk about family businesses in transition, what about you yourself? Did you transition into the business? Your entry must have been the crucial link to the kind of transition you want to get into the SR group. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, certainly, uh, mine was a transition because uh, the group really uh, got start founded uh, by my father and my uncle. Uh, in 1969. So I joined the business in 85 and uh, uh, a lot of the action which we saw in India in terms of liberalization, growth uh, and many of the sectors which we got involved with uh, really came uh, in the late 80s and early 90s. So, uh, But at the same time a significant amount of foundation of the group had been built uh, by the time I actually joined. So it was a transition in, in one sense and uh, in the last few years obviously we've gone through a second transition which is to globalize and make the group ready for an international for the international markets but uh, when you talk about family businesses a lot would have uh, depended upon your induction itself i mean a lot of people think family business means it's a matter of my right my prerogative to get into it uh, i think it would help the crowd here to say how your induction process took place because for you to bring about any change, you have to have the team on board and maybe your induction played a key role in that. Well, uh, when I started, the advantage I had uh, was uh, I was quite young, uh, so, uh, and I hadn't, uh, I had to give that up. Uh, an early start in the business was the option vis-a-vis -vis an education internationally. Uh, most of my peers, most of my friends were, went, to, went to school in, uh, and college in the US or in the UK. But I, I gave that up and I, and I joined the business. So I, in, in a sense, I had an advantage because I was young and so I was ready to learn. But, you know, uh, the first job, which at least in our family, the first job is, you know, carry your bag. Carry, your, carry the, my father's bag or carry somebody else's bag. And the idea is not, it's basically to, you know, you, you learn by observing, you learn by seeing. And you, there was a period of about, uh, I would say, two or three years where we were in observer mode, uh, obviously a significant amount of travel, uh, spending time on sites, 
uh, and then you know and treating and learning from not only the, my parents but also from the senior management who was there and i think that's a very critical part of induction and that is to accept uh, you know seniority within the organization because people have really been there for many many years and uh, they have a lot of knowledge they have a lot of integrity they have a lot of loyalty to the family and to the business and i think for someone to come in from the second generation one of the key things is to really manage uh, uh, hit the relationship with the senior management uh, which has been with the family and the business for you know one decade or two decades before so that's an initial period the first few years and then of course you start taking on you know responsibility and decisions and it was not before i think five or six years before i, re I was really given any serious uh, any serious responsibility yeah. Uh, just a quick thing, uh, the art of persuasion. You said you were young. From what I understand, you were about 15 years old when you were inducted into business. So, at 15, when you come in and when you are evaluated at, uh, let's say, around 40 years of age, uh, is it the art of persuasion that you have to learn with the previous lot? Because they will say, oh, you've just come in, you don't know much about business, do you? So, listen to us and do what you do. Or you say, I am the family, I know how to do it. No, it's very much, uh, at least initially, I think uh, it's very much got to be the listening mode because uh, while, and I'm not, I'm not trying to say this because I, I did it that way, but even for, we have a lot of uh, people, I know a lot of friends who have come back, uh, studied internationally, it's quite normal, coming back and then, you know, believing that you're ready to, you know, take charge. My own view is that there is got to be a minimum period where, you know, you understand the organization, understand the culture, understand the people who are already there uh, and, and gain their trust. I think earning their respect and gaining their trust is a very key part of, of transition. If you want them to listen to, to listen to you and follow you, then you have to earn it. You're not going to get it just because you know, you're the son or the daughter and you know, you're, you're coming into the organization. Uh, at least that's, that's, that's my view. So once you entered, again, uh, a lot of people here are first generation entrepreneurs. They will go ahead and uh, want to expand their businesses. As you scaled up, we have got about $15 billion right now in terms of revenue. As you scaled up, where were the challenges, the mindset change? Because if you see today's environment, it is no longer just the internal mindset which has to change. You have to keep aligned with the external environment, which is changing at a much faster pace. So there are these two silos of change happening. Yeah, I think once you get to a particular size, then uh, then uh, the change is actually uh, got to be significant because uh, you're going international. You have a cultural, uh, you know, you have large number of uh, expatriates who are now part of your uh, of part of your team, and their culture and their style of management is extremely different from what we are used what we are used to in India. And you're dealing with uh, you know different uh, different cultures, different work styles, and um, and frankly, uh, a lot more transparency than what we have generally been used to in India. So, it's a, it's a continuous change. Uh, systems and processes become very, very important because uh, they, are not, they are used to a far more systematized way. We are used to, especially in family businesses when you start, we are used to sit on the pants, ha, aaj karna hai, kal ye karna hai. It, 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 so, it's chalta hai, attitude was there. Yeah, I mean, uh, every organization goes through that when you, when you start, you, you feel uh, you can decide and, and generally the entrepreneur thinks he can make a decision on the spot and everybody will, you know, follow. And once you get larger, it, it's got to be more systematized. You have to discipline the way you think and discipline the way you, you, uh, you know, uh, provide decisions or management or strategy to the organization. Is it then a myth, and a lot of people here are, I'm sure, working with second generation companies, so is it a myth that oh, the older lot is unprofessional? I mean, somewhere we need to kind of make that point clear that just because they've been around for 40 years, they may not be unprofessional. Their mindsets may be different and they can be attuned to the new style of functioning. No, I don't think it's unprofessional. It's just that uh, we're, everybody, I mean, we're used to a particular way of working. Uh, and as you, as your family, as, as the business grows and as you become more international or even in India, if you're getting larger, you have to change the way you operate uh, to meet the new requirements. And I think uh, first generation entrepreneurs, I, at least I can speak for my father and my uncle, they've, uh, they've made a huge transition and, uh, you know, it's, today they preach it much more than frankly what, what we do. So I don't think it's difficult, but I think what's important is that people need to accept that change is necessary. And the, what you are going through or what you have been through cannot just carry on endlessly. 
and once you accept that then then uh, then i think it become much easier if i were to ask you